Hey guys, Alex here giving you a quick little update on Cevezda's new T26 model 1933 Soviet light tank. Um, I stopped by the store the other day, I was looking for a, there's, I was a T26 by, I believe it's Hobby Boss, yeah. Hobby Boss makes a couple variations of the T26, a Spanish Civil War version, um, 1933. I don't believe they make, I think it's a 1938 model with the, um, the curved turret. Um, this is the same turret that's also on the BT-7 before the uh, the 1935 model. Before it was 1937 was when they updated it to the um, the curved the uh, the, the uh, round armor. Excuse me. Um, I don't know, but I, I, re I really like the, the the primitiveness, if you will, of these of these turrets and the tank itself. Um, after doing a little bit of research from on this tank, the T-26 was actually part of a British design, from what I hear, a British design for the Vickers tank. And if you're familiar with the Vickers small light light armor little infantry support vehicle, which uh, the Germans ended up capturing some after the Dunkirk evacuation, and put I don't know the caliber, but um, they put one of their artillery weapons on it, and I believe they had it was a really low number, and all of which were apparently lost in the um, North African campaign. So let's go ahead and open up Svezda's 2014. One thing that Cevezda does that I, I really like is their, their packaging, and like this. Only if the model models sometimes were as good as the packaging, it'd be great. And another thing, if it was kept all in one bag, of which typical of Cevezda kits, it's all just out and about. Um, Alright, instruction sheet. <clears throat> hey, look, decals. Alright, some typical decals, pre-war. Um, I believe this is um, forward to victory or something to victory in Russian. Forgot why I read that before. I think I read that off of a uh, off a of trumpeter's KV one that I'm saying that for. Well, the de decal sheet. Uh, come on, camera. There you go. It's looking all right. Um, I know they're not they're not cartograph decals, but I did have I did use um, Sylvester's decals when I built their KV2, and they went they went down pretty good. It just it's a it's a lot of decal solution. Let's just let's just say that. All right, so the decals. Okay, let's see here. All right, everything seems to go together real nice. Nice pictures. One thing I do like with Sylvester that the um, the dragon does also have really every model company has, but I like how they they section it off completely. To where, uh, like, take the this intake here, for example, how they'll have it off on, on the side to put it together piece before putting there. I know Dragon does that too, but I just like how it's completely cut off. Dragon will have this whole thing as the picture, and then this will be in it too, depending on whether oh, if you want to add this or not. I just like how it has its own instruction sheet basically on the side. Okay, this kit also it contains length tracks. Uh, length tracks and some tracks that are actually um, individual links that then you would put together to, in a sense, pose around the um, the drive wheel. Drive the drive in the idle. All right, all in all, it looks pretty simple. When I built, uh, I built Savezda's. It's apparently it's a BT5, but when you yeah, yeah, there's the, the BT-5, you see the BT-2, the BT-5, and the BT-7. The BT-2 is really, a really nasty, dinky, simple tank. Then the BT-5 came out, and I believe the BT-5 shared the same exhaust as the BT-2. And the BT-7 came out, and which is where the, the iconic, the, uh, the dual exhaust pipes coming out of the back. The BT-7. Um, yeah, like I said, shares the 1935 turret, or 33 turret. Okay, and our decal options here are for three different options, decal and painting guide. Um, Soviet Russia, okay, Soviet Russia, Kiev's Military District, 1936. We have here Soviet Russia Special Special Far East Military District, 1939. That sounds interesting. And the Soviet Finnish War, 1940. All right. Okay, do the decals this way. Okay. Like, we're obviously going to follow it. But all right. Go take it inside. Uh, actually, let's put this back here. Bam! All right. Okie dokie. Let's take a look see here. Let's see if there are any 2014 stamp on here, and of which there is not so far. 
<clears throat> Excuse me. All right. The drive wheels and the idlers. So for here, one thing. Um, Savizda's Savizda model. They're plastic, as you can see here, and there is a ton of work that needs to be done on these models. But they go together really nice. It's like the spurs themselves. I mean, I honestly would rather do a cleanup job on them before I start it, just to make it look nicer. But that's just my opinion. Um, their models are real. They're really nice. Some of the older ones do have a lot of fit issues. I have no idea about this one, which means why I bought it for being 2014. I am curious, seeing how it falls together. And there's the spur times two. Let's see, there's a 2014 mark, of which there's not. T26 C, 135th scale by Cesar, as as specified. Okay, and this piece here, I do have the leftover spurs from the BT5 when I built its turret and this is isn't this is just a, a repackaged spur it's not new tool or anything wow look at the size of that jeez I don't know if y'all can see that on the antenna huge stringy piece I just ended up pulling off Oof, wow that is really bothering me hey don't worry about it right now okay well anyways is there any 2014 stamps on here go ahead and make sure to show proof there isn't on this one. But anyways, the, the turret itself, um, it's, it went together fine. I did have a problem fitting the two um, the two sides together. Um, but after a while, I just kind of just used some thicker glue, because I always use the Tamiya um, Extra Thin Cement. But I used Model Master, just standard Model Master um, plastic cement. And it's a bit thicker, and just kind of joined them together, clamped them, let them sit, and then just scraped away the excess, and it filled it in perfectly. So not a big issue here with the, with the turret. Um, one issue that I do see, um, I'm not sure, this could just be, um, like I said, I'll use them on the BT-5s and BT-7s. Um, with this turret here, the top, the top piece of the turret for the BT-7s that I've always researched, it shows here that it comes with the two doors, the two, the two hatches, excuse me, the, the two upper hatches for the tank commander and crew and all that good stuff. Now, from what I've seen on BT-7, uh, top holes is that it only has the left Just the left so it'll only have the left hatch and then to the right of it is a circular one Not too square, but I'll go ahead and do more research on this since it is an earlier model um, Vehicle it could have just possibly just been just a refit from uh, the same BT-7 turret BT-5 turret All right, so there aha and the tracks Let's take a look at the tracks. I need. Still haven't found a 2014 stamp yet. Oh, wait. Alright, well, this spur here. I don't, know if, I don't know if anybody can see it. 2010. <clears throat> I don't know what they might have put this on. Unless unless Sebesda has made BT7s in the past. I have not. I mean, a BT26. BT. Well, not BT. My lord. Sorry, it is one of my favorite vehicles. A T26. Excuse me. Um, T26 in the past. Uh, let's see here. The tracks themselves look like really nice, nice detail. Um, is there any real flash issues on here? Just a minor, minor by where it breaks off on the spur itself. Just a little bit. You can pretty much clean that up just by snipping it off, to be honest. Despite that, they seem to be really nice. Okay, and times two. All right, and now the finale parts. Oh, come on, you Boston. Ah, all right. And does this, by any chance, have it on it? And of course it doesn't. All righty. And for here, we have the entire, the entire hull from bottoms side, the top, the rear. Let's see here, the plastic is actually, it's really, really, really nice. It's not too thick, but it's thick enough to the point where um, Savezda models from ones that I previously built in the past, they're very flimsy plastic. And some of the detail in there too. The plastic is very flimsy, but this plastic here is actually really, really nice. Even like the, I think, I want to say that's a fuel, fuel and cap. No, it can't be. 
the plastic on here is, is really nice. It's not not too thin. It's not doesn't feel flimsy at all. And this is really thick, hardcore plastic. Um, for for the main body pieces, um, personally, I I really like seeing thicker plastic parts to really give the model a solid feel. I think we all could agree on to that one. Come on, camera, you can do it. There you go. This is a new camera, by the way. Uh, one my father gave me. Please, if anyone, if if, if if it looks much better from the previous videos or just just right off the bat, the quality is really nice, please let me know. I'll go ahead and continue to use it. And are these the rear? Ah, okay, here we are. There we are, really nice detail. Um, it's kind of odd how the it's completely numbered upside down, but anyways, um, the detailing on the riveting on these on these parts really really nice. Even the fenders here aren't even flimsy at all. They're really 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 nice. All right, I think that concludes it. Yep, despite the the instant throwaway sheet written in every language on the man. Alright, that is Sylvester's T26. Um, I'll probably do a... Probably a build-through video on this tank. It probably shouldn't take long at all. Um, there's very few parts to it. Really simple. The instructions, I have to say, are really nice. Real nice, easy to follow instructions. And the tank itself is just nice, small, compact. Really nice looking tank. Let's go ahead and put this back in here. Alright, and this, see if it gives a little brief, brief history for it. The T26 1933 was the development of the 1931 version with the two turrets, which was, I believe, also another infantry support tank. Where if you're unfamiliar with it, it's the T26 chassis, the whole body, everything, but the turret was off and it had two, I believe it was two DP28s um, tank variations of it, so to say, and it had uh, two turrets. And I believe it's the T40. Or the T24 tank. I'm probably. I think those are one of some of the models. I completely forgot the the numbers for it. But it was a T26 type. They took it from a T26 and they made it an amphibious vehicle. I believe it was the T40. That one might have a turret on it. But the Russians ended up experimenting. They actually had a, a ton of it. Um. Of uh, amphibious vehicles, which all branched out into the. Uh, I believe it's the BT forgot the designation of the one, but the one that everyone's familiar with, if you're familiar with any Cold War vehicles, you would most likely see it. Basically looks exactly like America's modern day Strikers. Not basically, but we took from the designs from that with sloping armor and making it amphibious. Um, see here, the larger turret carries a 45 millimeter gun and a smaller and the smaller coaxial machine gun. The radio antennas were installed in the turret were installed in the turret handrails, which would be these pieces here. Um, like shown on the back here, usually BT, BT, really anything, BT5, BT2s to 7s, and the T26s, uh, these were usually command tanks, from what I believe, or these were, um, really, uh, late variations of these tanks, because the Russian army during the, really, a lot of the tanks at the beginning of Barbarossa, when Germany invaded Russia, they were still using, they were communicating between tanks using flags and signals which obviously became obsolete when the Germans ended up rolling in with heavy everything compared to this and staying inside drinking their Joe while they're talking to all the other tanks destroying the rest of the world. But, leaving it on a nice note, a nice new model by Sevesda. I'm looking forward to building this. I also have a group of figures which I believe I'll probably throw in. Let's see, does it have it on here? Oh, there we are, Sevesda 2014. Made in Russia. This kit contains only 172 parts. All right, looks like a really nice little kit. Uh, where is the? Where are the figures that I want to add into this? Uh, ah, totally left them on the other side of the room. But all right. And I also picked these up um, the other day. Everyone's familiar with the uh, my hobby shop, and it's half off sale um, by ICM Operation. Operation Barbarossa, June 22nd, 1941 figures. So I'll probably add that with this. And I may build one of the uh, Panzer III's that I have. Three Dragon Panzer III's, of which I haven't built yet. 
So I'll probably, and I have a, uh, I believe it's a, a Panzer III E. Let's go ahead and add this. See, so yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. Um, might as well do a kit review on this too. Um, I've never built ICM models before, but I thought I'd go ahead and try out their figures. I'm going to cut this open real quick. Here. This kit, by the way, um, retail price stands at nine dollars. So I only I only paid a maximum of about four fifty for this. This paper here we are. Okay, and this here is the. All right, this is the Russian tanker. You get the face de detail on there. It's the tank survivor. This is the walking German, the walking Wehrmacht soldier. Anyway, the detail on this model is actually really nice. I really like all the the straps in each of the pockets and everything. Really good detail for ICM. Uh, I was really cautious in buying this, but I thought, hey, what do I got to lose? Four bucks. Why not? If it all comes to anything, I go ahead and try to make them dead men. But they look really, really nice. Um, I've only built dragon figures so far and all of pretty much dragon figures and now I have even premium gen uh, gen 2 figures you see this here they even have his knight's cross I mean it, it is a bit oversized but it never hurts definitely stand that out doing a little dry brush over that um, all the dragons figures that I've, I've built are just just amazing beautiful beautiful let's see this cap even the uh, Wehrmacht insignia on the officer's um, the officer's cap looks really really nice, and then the escorting German soldier. On there. And the weapons themselves look really really nice. No flash issues on there at all. I'm really looking forward to, to building this with the T26. This will be one of the future the future projects. Um, since school is starting up soon, I'm trying to finish up the um, upper, the uh, Kursk group build, excuse me, the Kursk group build, and Panzermeister 36 is followed the right group build before before school happens. And after that, I probably won't enter any group builds before I am going to be overloaded with work from taking two college classes, and I won't have any time to pretty much build models at all. So. I'll go ahead and do as best as I can. I will definitely keep everybody updated on this when I start this. It'll be a really fun project. Probably add two tanks and a ton of figures. And until then, I hope you all enjoyed the review. Please tell me what you think. If you have any questions on the kit itself, please go ahead and let me know. I'll be happy to try to answer you as best as I can. Hope you all enjoyed the review. And until then, see you on the battlefield.